This is a Nissan 370Z Nismo, and it's a new car. Well, actually, I think this is a 2017 model, but you wouldn't really know it from looking at it. The 370Z went on sale back for the 2009 model year, a decade ago, and it hasn't really changed all that much. These days, sales have slowed to almost nothing, but it is still on sale. And today, I'm going to review this one. I rented this 370Z Nismo here in Florida using Turo, which is this cool service that lets you rent other people's fun and interesting and exciting cars instead of normal boring airport rental cars. You can check out Turo by clicking the link in the description below and you'll get $25 off your first Turo rental. So why did I decide to rent a 370Z? Well, frankly, because this car has been on sale for a decade and I wanted to see how it has held up against increasingly more advanced competition. And by the way, I'm not making up that decade thing or exaggerating it. The 370Z replaced the 350Z for the 2009 model year. It's been out that long and the Nismo version came out the same year. This car has 350 horsepower and 270 76 pound-feet of torque, which is 18 horsepower more than the regular model, and 6 more pound-feet. Of course, the Nismo Z has more than just that. There are different wheels compared to the regular 370Z and bigger brakes. There's stiffer suspension for better handling, and there's a body kit for a cooler look. The Nismo 370Z also used to only be available with a manual transmission, but they added an automatic option for the 2015 model year. Now, the other big difference is price. A regular 370Z starts around $30,000, but the Nismo model starts around $46,000, which seems like a lot of money on paper, considering that a Mustang GT has 85 more horsepower and two extra seats for around six grand less. But today we're gonna find out if I'm all wrong with that line of thinking and the Nismo 370Z is actually a really good deal. First, I'm going to take you on a tour of it and I'm going to show you all of its quirks and features. Then I'm gonna get it out on the road and drive it and then I'm going to give it a Doug score. And for more of my thoughts on the Nismo 370Z, click the link below to visit autotrader.com slash oversteer, where I've also rounded up a list of the oldest new car models currently on sale today. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features of the Nismo 370Z here in the interior. And I'm gonna start with a few of the items in this car that you can tell are kind of old and outdated, starting with the gauge cluster. Now, most rivals have configurable gauge clusters with screens that give you all sorts of options. Not so in this vehicle. You can see the tachometer in the center is just a fixed gauge. Same with the speedometer on the right. You do have a screen over on the left, but it's just this black and orange, ugly pixelated screen with very limited functionality. You can use it to check like the time, your fuel range, your current fuel economy, that sort of thing, but that's basically it. Not much to it and it really looks old and outdated and gives you an idea of basically when this car is from. Now you can use these little two buttons on the top to scroll through a few various different menus, including you can go into settings and you can go into something called effects and you can turn that on or off. What kind of effects are we talking about here? Well, I don't know. Now, another way you can tell on the inside that the Z is outdated is the infotainment system. You have the infotainment screen in the middle. It's a color screen. It's relatively normal sized, but it isn't a touch screen. You can't touch it. Instead, you have to adjust it using these buttons and this dial below, which of course is more challenging than your typical touch screen. Now, despite the fact that this infotainment system is old and kind of outdated, it does have quite a few interesting quirks and features to it. For example, you can configure the map color in the navigation system. You go in there and you can select between three of my favorite colors. You have warm, cool, and traffic emphasis. Ah yes, traffic emphasis. My second favorite color after purple, but right before cool. 
Now, next up, another interesting item in the infotainment system. In the navigation settings, it allows you to select your average speed on various different types of roads. You can leave it in auto and then it will pick, or you can manually adjust it. If, for example, you think you're going to be going 95 miles an hour on the freeway, you can set it for that and then it will update the projected destination arrival time based on your speed that you've inputted, which is kind of cool. Interestingly, you can bring it all the way down to five miles an hour on the freeway, which sounds really low, but it could be useful in a bumper to bumper traffic situation. Now, next up, like most cars, the clock in this car is automatic. You basically select a time zone, it uses your GPS, and it tells you what time it is, but you can also manually offset the time by a few minutes. You can have the clock read a little faster or a little slower if that's what you want to which I have to respond, why? Who are you people who are like, no, gotta have my clock read five minutes fast. Can't you just look at the time and then compute it five minutes fast? Do you actually have to adjust it? But for those of you who have trouble adding five, <laughs> Nissan has given you the ability to make that adjustment in the infotainment system. Next up, another interesting quirk of the infotainment system, you have a maintenance reminder feature and you can go in here and you can set the last oil change and have it remind you when you're due for a next one on the oil filter, whatever. You can also do the same thing for tires and you can set an interval to whatever you want including 250 miles <laughs> so it can let you know every 250 miles that you need new tires if that's how you want to set it which is kind of strange another thing that i find very interesting in this infotainment system is the fact that it gives you a weather map and not just for your local area but you can see the entire country's weather map in case you want to play weather reporter. Well, it's looking like it's going to be three out there in Montana. Bet those people wish they were down in Houston where it's going to be 72. We got a nice big cold front coming across the northern plains. Down here in Florida, it's going to be 66 and sunny with a light chance of rain. Back to you, Roger, in the studio with traffic. How are things looking out there? Now, another obvious way where the 370Z is really starting to feel old is the fact that it has no active safety features. There's no forward collision warning. There's no blind spot monitor. There's no lane departure warning. There's no lane keep assist, blah, blah, blah. It has a backup camera, but only because the government mandates that now doesn't have anything else. Now, some people are gonna watch this video and they're gonna be like, well, I don't want those things in my sports car. I don't need my sports car to be complicated. And I get it, that makes sense, but this isn't just a sports car, it's also a $47,000 car. And when you pay that kind of money, most rivals include that stuff. Even if you don't plan on needing it, it can be kind of useful. You can't even get it in the Z. Now, next up, moving past the technology to a couple of other quirks and features in this interior, I wanna start with the seats. I really like the seats. For one thing, I like how they look. I like the red inserts. They look like cool sports seats, but if you're sitting on them, they're not too tight or too excessive on your body. They're really comfortable, well bolstered. These are really, really good seats. I don't love the seat controls. These are manually adjustable seats, which is questionable for this kind of money, but fine, they're sports seats, they're lighter, so you want manual adjustment. The problem is the manual adjustment are right between the seat and the door and in some cases they're really hard to turn and move and I prefer if it was easier somehow to adjust the seat. Now speaking of the seats obviously this is only a two-seat car but behind the seats you have little storage cubbies where you can put stuff if you want a little extra cargo room in a rather small car and behind the storage cubbies there are little boxes that you can open up to put even more stuff and get it out of the way although for some reason that box is actually only on the passenger side the driver's side doesn't have it not sure why they made that compromise but they did and speaking of storage it's worth noting to the left of the steering wheel below the gauge cluster there's a little storage item for your key a little slot where you can put it while you're driving in case for whatever reason you don't want to keep it in your pocket next up another interesting item with this car the sun visor folds down just like normal but then there's this little plastic part that comes out from the sun visor that blocks the mirror just in case you don't want to see the sun and you don't want to see what's behind you. No, of course, I'm just kidding. That is for when you move the sun visor over to the side. Obviously, this is a two-door car, so the doors are kind of long. You can extend that little plastic piece and cover the rest of your side window to block yourself from the sun. Now, another interesting item inside the Z 
in the center console here, you have these three blank switches right in the middle, very obvious. I believe in the convertible Z models, this is where like the top control is, but come on, Nissan. Could you not just make one different center console for the convertible and the coupe? How expensive could that have been? Instead, you drive down the street in your $47,000 car and you stare at these three blank switches for options that you didn't get. Next up, moving on to the gauge cluster, one interesting item in there is the fact that this car has a rev light. I say it's interesting because this is the automatic version and something I noticed driving this car around is the rev light will even turn on if you're just in automatic mode. <laughs> even if you're not in the manual paddle shifter mode, you're just in D for drive, the rev light will turn on letting you know that it's time to shift even though <laughs> the car is supposed to be automatically shifting for you. And of course the car will shift, but only after that rev light has been blinking for a little while letting you know that it's time to shift. Another thing I find kind of funny in this car is at the top of the dashboard, you have these three aggressive looking gauges that look like some Fast and the Furious add-on. They're gonna display some really important performance car information, but instead you have a temperature gauge, you have the battery voltage gauge, and then you have a clock, which is right next to the clock in the infotainment system and off by a minute. And I swear I didn't change the offset in the infotainment clock. They just aren't synced up. But anyway, those performance gauges, not quite as performancey as I was thinking they would be based on looking at them. Now, next up, we move on to the outside of the Nismo Z. And I'm gonna start with the Nismo Nist. Exactly what differentiates this from a regular Z in terms of styling? To start, you have this front bumper, which is more aggressive and angrier than a regular Z. And it has the Nismo logo in it, just to emphasize how Nismo it is. Then you have the wheels. These wheels are different from the ones you get in a regular 370Z. They're larger and they're more aggressive looking. And then around back, you have this rear bumper that's also more aggressive, angrier, and you have this rear diffuser on the bottom that looks cooler and sportier, more like you'd expect from a high performance car. Of course, in addition to that rear bumper and diffuser back there, you also have this big rear wing, which is unique to the Nismo model and further differentiates it versus the regular 370Z. None of those items, however, are my favorite Nismo upgrade. Instead, my favorite is on the mirrors. You can see there's this little red stripe and actually it's a decal you can just peel that off but that is unique to the Nismo cars letting you know that someone is a true Nismo driver they have the red mirror stripe decal Next up, another item I like with the Z, that would be lighting. And I wanna start with the brake lights. First off, I've always loved the design of the brake lights on this car. The rear quarter panel kind of comes in and makes a little triangular shape and the brake light bends around. And I've always thought that that looked cool. And I also like the design of the brake lights, the taillights from a lighting perspective. You look in here and you have like a pyramid of lights. The top level is one light, then two, then three, then four. I think that looks pretty cool. No question though that the coolest exterior light on the 370Z is on the side, on the front fender. You have the little Z badge. When you put on the turn signal, that lights up and the turn signal lights up in that circle and kind of illuminates the Z, which is a nice little touch. Now, the coolest light on the 370Z would be this red light at the bottom of the rear end on the rear diffuser if that lit up like a cool fourth brake light like a race car, but unfortunately it doesn't. I guess it's just there for show or it's a reflector and it doesn't light up. Although I'm sure there are some Z owners out there who have converted it to light up. I wish it had done so from the factory. Now, one other exterior item worth noting on this car that's unusual is the door handles. These are some of the strangest door handles in the industry. Not only are they silver, unlike anything else on the outside of this car, but they're vertical. Rather than horizontal door handles you pull, they're vertical and they open sort of in the motion of the door. You pull on them, the door opens in the same direction. Very unusual door handles in this vehicle. Now, next up, we move on to the cargo area of the 370Z. But first, I want to talk about one really good idea Nissan has going on back here. Right above the license plate, there are two buttons. Now, the button on the right, you press it and it pops open the cargo cover and then you can open it from there. Pretty simple. But... There's also a button on the left. That button locks all the doors, which is a really good idea because if you're getting your stuff out of the cargo compartment, you close this, then you don't have to get the key out of your pocket and press the lock button or go around to one of the doors and press the lock button. You can just tap this button here 
and it locks all the doors from the back. Really smart idea. A lot of automakers forget that and they shouldn't. Now, next up, we move on to the cargo area. And as you can see, the cargo area is okay sized for a vehicle like this. It has fairly large surface area, but there's really not all that much space here. Nonetheless, it's okay. And you can get a reasonable amount of stuff back here. And you can see that the cargo floor has the Z on it because this is a 370Z. Now, if you lift up that cargo floor, you get another cargo floor. And if you lift up that cargo floor, you get another cargo floor. And if you lift up that cargo floor, you get, well, not a spare tire. Instead, you have a subwoofer in the shape of the spare tire where the spare tire would go. I guess that's so you can rock out while you're waiting for a tow truck to come help you if you get a flat because you won't be able to change it since there's no spare tire in this car. And finally, we move up front where you can see it. There it is, the 3.7 liter V6. No sign of turbocharging here. This engine makes 350 horsepower in all of its naturally aspirated glory. Very old school engine in a very old school car. One thing I like about this engine is that it says on it V6, VVEL. VVEL was Nissan's variable valve timing system that first debuted back in 2007, more than 12 years ago. But Nissan is proud of their cutting edge new 12 year old technology. And so they're advertising it on the engine cover still all these years later. And so that's a comprehensive tour of the Nismo 370Z. Now it's time to get it out on the road and see how it drives. All right, driving the Nismo Z. Now I gotta admit, it's, uh, it's faster than I expected it to be given the horsepower number. It's a fairly small car. Um, compared to the Mustang, you know, its benefit is that it's quite a bit shorter. Obviously, there's only two seats in this car. It's smaller, and so it feels a little bit smaller. And it's really not so bad. I've driven quite a few manual Zs, and I wanted to try out an automatic, and, and I'm actually surprised um, it's not terrible. Now, it's no dual clutch, but nothing in this segment really has a dual clutch. Camaro does and that sort of thing. Now, with that said, it could nonetheless be faster. Um, 350 horsepower is pretty good, but when you think about $46,000, um, that's a lot of money, uh, considering that you can get Camaro and Mustang with big V8s for way less money and have more power. And obviously those cars also have way more tech and more features like I've kind of covered earlier. But mid-range power is pretty good too, just a little stab of throttle and it gears down quickly. And uh, there's, there's reasonable power in this vehicle. I'm actually impressed with it. In terms of handling, it's tighter than you might think. Surprisingly well balanced going around corners. Um, I actually think this car's driving experience is kind of an asset. Um, yeah, it's obviously low on equipment and ridiculously so. Um, but even though it's a 10 year old car, I actually think it's, it's, it's pretty exciting and pretty fun to drive. Looking around the interior, certainly the interior is a drawback in this car. You know, people make fun of the Mustang and the Camaro for having, you know, all horsepower and nothing else is good. But man, I mean, this car, the interior is so weak. It's just all straight, cheap plastic. Um, the gauge cluster not being configurable at all is, it's still this old, you know, pixelated screen. It is, it really looks like the old car that it is when you're looking at it from the inside. a lot of noise. I know that Z people think it makes a good noise. I think the noise is okay, um, but it doesn't even come close to comparing to a nice, you know, V8 rumble like you get uh, in a Camaro or a Mustang or something like that. But the shifting is both smooth and relatively quick. I, I actually think the transmission is not as big of an issue as I was expecting it to be. And I like the engine relatively. I just don't, don't like it for 46 and change. It's just too much money to only be putting out 350 horsepower. And it's also too much money to only be putting out like 18 more horsepower than the regular 370Z. Um, you know, for a price premium of uh, probably with options, maybe like $10,000 over the regular Z, you gotta have more power than that. But I also just get the sense that Nissan doesn't really care all that much about this car anymore. Um, you know, this, this car came out 10 years ago, the market has, shifted away from sports cars 
Um, you know, throughout the Z's history, it has sort of started and stopped a few times, gone out of production, then they'd revive it. And that's sort of been a, a Z hallmark. Um, and I think the market conditions, unfortunately, and I hate to say this, but I think the market conditions are right right now for it to stop again. And, and maybe it will be smart to bring it back at some point again soon. Um, but it's been 10 years since it came out. There's no clear replacement on the horizon. It can't continue like this. Uh, it just feels too old. It's too underpowered. Every rival has been redesigned once or twice since this car came out. Um, and it just doesn't feel like it really is tremendously competitive anymore. And so that's the Nissan 370Z Nismo. This is a fun car, even with the automatic. It's exciting, it's thrilling, it looks cool and it's fast, but the problem is it's not fast enough to justify its price tag, especially in the face of rivals that are way newer with way more technology and way more power, and often they cost way less money. It's time for Nissan to figure out what to do with the Z, either cancel it or redesign it, because this model just isn't cutting it anymore. And now it's time to give the Nismo Z a Doug score. Starting with the weekend categories and styling, the 370Z Nismo looks nice enough and it gets a 6 out of 10. Acceleration does 0 to 60 in 5.1 seconds and it gets a 5 out of 10. Handling is good, it's a short rear wheel drive car and it feels sharp and it gets a 7 out of 10. Fun factor is only okay, though it's dulled by the automatic transmission in my test car and it gets a 6 out of 10. Cool factor isn't as high as rivals, this thing has been out for ages and nobody is exactly thrilled by it anymore and it gets a 6 out of 10 for a total weekend score of 30 out of 50. Next up are the daily categories and features. This thing is ancient and so is its technology and it gets a 5 out of 10. Comfort is normal for the class and it gets a 5 out of 10. Quality is fine, interior materials are only average but reliability is strong and it gets a 7 out of 10. Practicality is normal for a 2 seater and it gets 3 out of 10. Finally, value and this just isn't a great one with a high starting price and not enough to offer and it gets a 5 out of 10 for a total daily score of 25 out of 50. Add it up and the Doug score is 55 out of 100 which places it here among rivals. When I saw how low the Nismo 370Z finished, I was truly shocked, but I can't think of any place where I'd boost the score. Yes, the Z is even beaten out by the Hyundai Veloster N. The 370Z is definitely more fun, and the weekend score reflects this, but the Veloster N is more practical, more efficient, and much cheaper, and the Hyundai has way better tech. Driving the Nismo Z feels like stepping into a used car, but it's a 2019 model used car that costs almost 50 grand. Hey!